Hey guys, so today I had a conversation with Greg Hammond, who's an accountant and financial advisor who works with some of the top companies all around the country. Just recently, he was rated by Forbes magazine as one of the top 10 accounting firms in the entire country. And here's the best part. Greg works with well over 100 chiropractors to help manage their finances. And in today's video, we talk all about chiropractic student loans, paying off that debt, and becoming financially independent so we can lay a foundation to become the best chiropractors we possibly can. It was an incredible conversation. I learned a lot from it, and I know you will too. So go ahead, sit back, relax, take it in, and enjoy. All right, Greg, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, we really, really appreciate uh, having you on here, taking the time to meet with us students. You know, gosh, this is gonna be such a great call. I, I already know it's gonna be such a great call. Um, so Greg, why don't you go ahead and, you know, I was just pulling up an article I saw here that Forbes Magazine rated you as one of the top 10 accounting firms in the entire country. And I was like, that is crazy, uh, absolutely insane. So. How did that come to be? Uh, well, uh, that's a good question because we don't actually know. Um, <laughs> that just showed up in our email one day too. I guess it's just a culmination of trying to do the right thing for a long period of time. And finally somebody recognizes you. So we're, we're very excited to hear about that. And it's just confirmation that you're doing good stuff, I guess. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, it probably happened because of the great work that you do, for sure. Um, and now I know you work with tons, a lot of other businesses and so many different injury or in industries we're talking about before. You're doing like film and gaming and all sorts of different types of businesses, which is really awesome. And then what, how we found each other, Greg, was through you know, your connections with different chiropractors. And I know um, now you probably see, you can, you can probably tell me, but I know you probably are working with over 100 chiropractors now. Is that right? That's right. I mean, five years ago, it was zero chiropractors I was working with, and now it's pushing 125 and maybe 130 by the end of the year, hopefully. So, yeah, it's just kind of exploded over the last five, six years. Wow. That's amazing. So, how did do you want to kind of talk about that process about how you started to work with chiropractors? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Dr. Jeremy and Dr. Amanda Hess showed up in my office one day looking for a new accountant, were referred by an attorney. And um, kind of just started from there. I was doing their basic work for them. They had the idea to start this mentorship program that they thought was really going to help um, students open offices. Yeah. And it has succeeded certainly beyond my wildest dreams. Um, I'm sure they had big thoughts when they're going into it. Um, but they asked me if I wanted to be a part of it early on. And of course, I said yes. And I attended my first conference and was 100% sold at that point. I got it. So it's kind of really gone very well ever since that point. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And so that's how we connected was through that same mentorship program, which is absolutely phenomenal and just preparing chiropractors for not just in practice, but I, I think just as business and really the inside game of it with team and leadership and communication. And so, one of obviously those big pockets of that is the financial side. And so I know that's kind of what, what your, your blessing has with, with your background as an accountant kind of coming in and pouring into us chiropractors, which is such needed. And so we'll get into kind of a lot of the stuff that you're doing with, with chiropractors uh, that you're working with now that are all over the country. But I want to first talk about probably hands down the number one question that I get asked all of the time. And I, I get asked probably hundreds of different questions about chiropractic school, chiropractic, and by far none, the most common category of questions that I get asked has to deal with student loans. Mm -hmm. um, particularly with, I think whenever you're looking in a chiropractic school, you know, you start to look at the cost of it and then you realize, holy crap, like this is a big commitment. I'm committing myself to, if I finish this program, over six figures in debt. And that is a scary number for a lot of people. And so for sure, by far none, the commitment to want to become a chiropractor. I mean, you're not just committing a lot of time and effort and energy, but also the financial aspect as well. So I know that kind of puts a lot of students and a lot of chiropractors in a big frenzy whenever they, uh, you know, that, that comes to reality for them. So let's start with that, Greg, because I know you work with a lot of chiropractors uh, with the student loan side and the debt side and helping them get out of debt as quickly as possible. Why don't you go ahead and just kind of share 
what your experience has been with the chiropractors regarding student loans. Uh, we'll start with like, with what's the average amount of debt that, that chiropractors are coming out with? Well, typically what I'm seeing is about $250,000. And that seems like a scary and insurmountable number without a doubt. But I think you really have to shift your thinking into this is not an expense. This is not a cost. This is an investment that will pay off in many years to come. Right. I mean, it's just like buying a stock for $250,000 that will return you millions of dollars in the future. That's how you have to look at it. Right. Right. 100%. And of that, would you say of that 250, a lot of that is just the schooling and the program itself, but also is that included with a lot of the grad plus or living expenses and things like that's a cumulative effect? It is. Out. Yeah. It encompasses all of that. Um, and, and certainly I see sometimes it's a little bit lower than that and occasionally a little bit higher, but 250 seems to be the number. And, um, you know, most of it is for, for tuition, room and board and living expenses. Yeah. But there are also a handful of people that I've seen that have taken that money and saved it, put it into an account to open the practice in two years. Right. So that's a strategy some people use and I've seen it work. Yes. And that's, that's a big point there, Gray, because uh, we can get into uh, the other aspect, which is not just student loans, but then now if you want to open your own practice, you now have to talk about getting a bank loan to open your own practice with. And typically with that process, they need some capital. You know, I, I've heard it ranges anywhere between upwards of 20, 25% around there, correct? And so they also kind of use that student loan debt. That's kind of part of it to, to have that capital, right? Yeah, they, they do. And I think the, the thing that you bring up is you're going to have to borrow money when you open your practice on top of your student loan. Yeah. Uh, the big thing to keep in mind though, is that lenders, banks are expecting there to be student loan debt. So it's not going to be a disqualifier for you to have $250,000 that you already owe. Mm -hmm. Now it, it's a factor for sure, but it, it's expected and um, you still can get your loan that way, but having, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 set aside already of your money to invest is going to go a long way to getting off on the right foot. Right, right, absolutely. And so I know for a lot of people that are probably watching this, they're like 250, that's a quarter million of a dollars. That is absolutely insane. Hearts are racing right now. But like you had said, it's an investment. You're, you're investing in something that's far bigger than that in the future. And if you begin to think of it with that lens, it kind of changes the narrative that you tell yourself, which is a big aspect of it, right? So why don't we talk into sort of, well, for, first off, how, what's your kind of role that you play in um, advising these chiropractors? I mean, I know you're an accountant, but do you do most of the accounting work or do you also kind of work on the financial advising kind of a side or kind of like a mix of both? Well, it's definitely a mix of both. Yeah. Um, we do your basic accounting, which, which is, is going to be the foundation of anything. If I don't have good numbers to look at, then any kind of advice that I might give is just is useless. Right. So we start by making sure that your numbers are right. And then from, from seeing what you're producing, what your potential is, then we can give you that financial advice in the future of, you know, this is the direction you should go in or these are your options. And I think that's a big thing for people to understand too, is every person that I'm working with is going to be, they're going to have a lot of similarities for sure. But each person is an individual with different goals, um, different factors that are affecting their lives. So you kind of have to adjust your thinking to see what works for you, not what, what works for somebody else, but what works for you. Right. And yet that 250 seems insurmountable and, and just crazy big numbers. But if you put your mind to it and open in the right way and really put your elbow grease on it, it is not unusual at all for that loan to be paid back within five years. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you're thinking there's no way I can pay back $50,000 a year and live yeah, you can. Yeah. And not just that, but you're going to have other money that you're going to wonder what to do with. Mm -hmm. If you do the right things, it doesn't happen by magic. 
right. I think the hard work. Yep, exactly. And that, that's what I love about your plan here is that you're getting and, and typically that seems to be right about the money spot, right? That a lot of the chiropractors are working with, they're getting out of debt between five to seven years. Does that seem to be about the average? It, it, it is. Now, some are going to take longer uh, because their, their philosophy in repaying debt is going to be different. You know, I can work with that too, but most people don't like to go to bed at night knowing they owe somebody something. So it's, it's, our job to work together to figure out, all right, how do we make sure that you're sleeping good at night because you don't know that person. Right. Exactly. And I think that's such, Oh my gosh. Like, because a lot of the times, like whenever I was going, uh, looking and shadowing other chiropractor offices back home in West Virginia, whenever I was shadowing just different docs here and there, that was a topic that I was just curious about was like, how does a student, how does the, the payoff uh, process work with paying off their loans? And I had this chiropractor and this isn't, ragging him at all in his practice and things of that nature. But he was at this stage about 12 years into practice and he was still paying off his student loans. And I thought that was quite interesting. Um, and come to find out that seems to be kind of the case for a lot of chiropractors, not just chiropractors, but also a lot of other health professionals, MDs, or typically they, t they take this really long winded approach to paying off that debt. And I think it goes to point to what you were saying, like the, the anxiety, just knowing that you owe someone money that you're in debt can pay a big role. You know, whenever you have to write that check off every month to someone else, um, there's just something to that, I believe. Right. Yeah. I, I think you really have to hit on something that people, uh, when they're faced with, with what they think is insurmountable, you kind of push it to the background and you don't deal with it. Um, I think that's one thing. I think the other thing is that the offices that I'm working with make a concerted effort to open the right way and to build their practice quickly. If you don't have that guidance and you're barely making enough to pay the rent and put food on your table, then who cares about student loan debt? That's something that happened years ago. I think people can get caught up in that cycle of uh, the slow start and just kind of trudging along and thinking that that debt's always going to be there and you have no way of ever paying it back, but you can. And I think the, the biggest thing is to get off to a good start and have a plan. And yeah. it's hard for people to do that on their own. You have to rely on other people to teach you how to do that because they're not teaching you that in school. Absolutely not. I can attest and, to and that. Really, they they, they shouldn't can. be. I mean, they should be teaching you how to, Yes. Do chiropractic. That's what the job is. Yes. Um, but there's a lot more to it than just that, for sure. 100%. And I, I, I say this all the time, that the purpose of school is to get you to become a doctor, but that encompasses your clinical knowledge and ability to pass your boards and get that degree that calls you a doctor. That's as far as the school does. And that's all they should do. Like you said, that is the role. And that's really all they can focus on, um, for sure. And so a lot of this other stuff with business and finances, that's stuff you got to learn elsewhere um, through someone like you. And that's why we have you here on this call, which is absolutely amazing. And so I, I love that. So this is the mindset shift now that, okay, we got all this debt, but you know what? I'm going to pay this thing off in five to seven years and I can do it because I'm going to learn how to become successful, become financially dependent out of the school. And that's certainly possible. And, and just your account is a testament to that as you're working, not just with a couple, but with well over 150, you said, right? Up, upwards chiropractors now all over the country. And so what, what typically then, what is the, with the actual payment, um, if you want to get into specifics with that, with actually paying off these loans in monthly, because I know how the loans typically work with say the federal loans is different than say undergrad where you're working with like private loan companies, but for the chiropractor program, since it's a uh, more of a, there you go, I lost focus there. It's typically, since it's a federal loan, you're typically paying, I know you have the choice to do, uh, to pay off like a fixed amount of your principal every single mm -hmm. month, or you can choose to do like an income based where you're paying 10%, I believe of whatever your income is. Um, I would assume that that's the route, the income base is what most of the chiropractors that you work with do. Do you know that? That is true. And my philosophy is a little bit different than, um, some others typically people are going to come out with <coughs> excuse me five six seven ten different loans right. they're 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 borrowing every 
uh, semester. Yeah. And that's another thing that gets people into inertia is I got 12 loans I got to deal with and then I can't deal with it. And I'm just not going to think about it. Right. Um, but what my strategy is, is everybody apply for that income based repayment, yep. which will be the lowest required monthly payment that you have to make. So do that as long as you can. And it's usually the second year in practice. Now you're generating a little bit more income, still be on that income based repayment plan. But look at it every quarter and say, you know what? I got an extra five thousand dollars that I don't need this quarter. And I'm going to devote that to my loan that has the lowest balance on it. So I'm going to pick off these low balance loans first so I can see that I'm making myself a little progress. And then eventually you keep doing that strategy. The loans start disappearing um, and you have it taken care of. And those quarterly payments that you'll be making, they get bigger and bigger and bigger because you're making more and more money. Right. So you just kind of snowball on that repayment plan. Right. Uh, but I do think the key is you start with income based repayment because you've got to have money to live. Right. You don't want to be locked into some high monthly payment. 100%. And that's a big thing that I think uh, will, will help so many people out in understanding that you can do the income based. So it's based off whatever you're making. Now you said this too, it comes out the second year, correct? So you're not actually paying any of the student loans if you don't need to that first year, correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah. You, you're probably going to have to have a zero required payment that first year and maybe a low payment the second year. Um, but certainly by that point, you're going to be making a whole lot more than that loan payment's going to be. Right. Exactly. And so that typically, again, if that's giving you that essentially year to two year buffer now, once you're coming out of school, that gives you a chance to lay a foundation for a successful practice that now can be uh, very fruitful for, for future growth, but also again, for saving that money aside to get that loan uh, paid off properly. Definitely. And you know, I was looking at um, a client's books just this week mm -hmm. and was looking back through his um, loan payments and it was like $10,000 a month, $10,000 a month. Wow. Consistently. So you can do that. Again, it seems like you, you're never going to be able to get there, but you can. And it's, yeah. You do not have to be an all-star to do that. It's just, that's the norm. Sure. Sure. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And wow. So that, that, that's really, that's really gold there. What would you say uh, if, if you can share this now? I know with, with these average chiropractors here, because questions we get, you know, you look on say salaries.com, the average chiropractor, uh, given this is the pool of all chiropractors are now making in 2020, 100, about $150,000 is typically the income for a chiropractor. And so if you kind of do that math, then if you're on the average side, you know, 10% of that, you're looking somewhere around, you know, fifteen, sixteen thousand $16,000 again for the loans to be paid off that year. That's a minimal principle, right? How does that in comparison, how would that relate? Would you say that's about ballpark with the chiropractors you see, or what would you say is about that average number for, for those docs? Um, it, it, it really does range, um, from, from office to office, mm -hmm. but it's not, um, untypical for me to hear somebody say, look, I'm going to pay $50,000 this month toward my loans. Yeah. Um, usually two or $3,000 is really what I see a lot of people doing, mm -hmm. but it's not unusual at all for it to be a lot more. And as far as how much you can make or how much you should be bringing in as a, as a chiropractor, I'll kind of shift your thinking a little bit. Uh, think in terms of what's gross revenue that you can bring in, into the practice every month. You know, and, and it's very, it should be pretty easily achievable to do $500,000 a year in gross revenue in your second or third year. Right. And that's, that's totally doable. And at a minimum, 40% of that should be going home with you. So if you're bringing in five and taking home 40% of that, that's $200,000 a year that you're taking home. And that's really on the low side of what you can do. Mm -hmm. And it can be a lot more than that. And it, it, it is a lot more than that for some people. So, I mean, again, just to point out, Yes, $250,000 of a student loan is, is a lot of money, 
that would be considered an investment for, for an income machine, then it makes sense to do it. Right. Right. 100%. And mm -hmm. just laying it out like that, it, it creates so much ease, at least with me. And I, I hope it's doing the same for, for so many other people here, because then it just becomes a matter of, okay, balancing out the finances. Now it's kind of looking at other expenses like living expenses or, you know, your car payments, things of that nature, and then just incorporating, you know, kind of in that way with that income based uh, repayment plan, you can kind of, you have your bare minimum that you have to pay, but then now you kind of have some flexibility for how much, how much else you want to, you want to pay back. Right. Um, yeah, definitely. And that flexibility is the key. You always want yeah. flexibility. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about what you, some, some other work that you do with um, outside of maybe just the debt and finance side, just talk a little bit about the work that you're doing with, with, uh, with these chiropractors. Well, a, a big part of, of your practice and your cash flow is going to be the amount of taxes that you have to pay. Uh, so a big part of what I do is try to figure out um, what your tax um, obligation is going to be, help you prepare for that, um, and help you minimize it as much as possible. We're all going to pay taxes. Yeah. It's just going to be a matter of how much, and we work to try to help minimize that, prepare that. We also are working toward helping you build a sound financial future, and that involves long-term savings plans, whether that be through retirement, outside of retirement. Um, some people are interested in rental properties. So ever how you want to invest all this extra money that you're going to have, we're there to help guide you in making the right decisions to do that too. So what we want is a lifetime partnership, help you get open right. um, and then hold your hand all through the process through data retirement. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. That's so awesome. And it just shows how amazing this profession is for, for why we got into it in the first place. But then to, I, I think it's also comforting to know that this profession can also be very fruitful for you, for your family, uh, for your loved ones as well. Um, but a lot of it just takes that understanding and meeting people like you, Greg, who I think it's more or less a mindset, a mindset shift first, right. Than it is just kind of like knowing this new trick or thing. Cause it's not this new thing that's going to like save you. It's kind of, a much more mindset shift, like you said, like not looking at the loans as something that's scary, but rather an investment that you can easily manage it, just like you're paying off your car or your house. It's just another little thing that's going to help unlock so many amazing things for the future. So let's talk a little bit about um, the opening process as well. It just, just very briefly uh, with the banking loan process as well. Do you do any work with chiropractors who are just opening their practices? All the time, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so why don't you talk about, uh, I guess, is the main, what seems to be the main stressor there? Is it more or less getting a bank loan? Yeah, it definitely is getting a bank loan. And I, I think, again, this is another mindset thing, because yeah. you have to put yourself in the position of the lender and try to look through things with their eyes. So what a lender sees is somebody who's 26 years old, who's never run a business before that has debt already that wants to open a business from scratch. If I'm a lender, that does not sound like a very good um, candidate to, <laughs> to repay a loan to me. Right. So what you really need to do is uh, make sure that, that your projections are right or reason, reasonable, I guess, is more than right. Um, a big thing that, that a, a banker is going to want to see or a lender is going to want to see is a true indication of what you need to live on. I think a lot of people forget about that part. They can come up with a projection for their practice that says we're gonna make uh, $3,000 a month in our first year, but their reasonable living expenses is $5,000 a month. Right. Well, it's hard to repay loans when you're not making enough money. Right. So it's, it's being having a good business plan, um, not putting too much fluff in your business plan, and thinking like the lender. Right. And if you can put those pieces together, yeah, I mean, you, you will have some rejections. There's no doubt about it. And you might have to go from bank to bank to bank, but you can do it. Um, the banks are there for lending. And another good strategy, I think, is for um, 
wherever you decide to open your office, you've probably got friends or acquaintances that have gone there before you or in that general area, in that state. Talk to them about who they got their um, initial loan from because that lender now can see, you know what, this is a good, um, good loan for me to make. It's a good, good investment for me as a banker. So yeah, it's another insurmountable task that you think is going to be there is getting in that business loan, but it's not. Yeah. Another one of those things. Yeah, exactly. Just another one of those things. Again, the mindset shift. Uh, I love what you said. Put put your mind in the in in the beholder, if you will. Uh, For sure. Abs- absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible there. Um, well, wow, this has been a really really powerful uh, uh, call. I know one last thing that I want to add here with obviously with the wave of, of, of COVID-19 coming through and just damaging so many small businesses. I know um, a lot may worry about the small businesses with chiropractic practices. How has uh, that been looking, the impacts of COVID and how has that changed things for the chiropractors you're working with? Well, it, it, again, you can be successful. Successful. I've had a couple of practices that opened this year right in the teeth of the crap. And I'm talking third and fourth weeks of March when they had their grand openings. Mm-hmm. And probably the worst time in history that you could ever open a business. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, at this point in time, they are very successful. The business is growing. They have positive cash flow every month. So it can be done. Yeah. Um, you brought up the term flexible a few minutes ago, which is very important. You know, I'm big on shifting your thinking, think about things in a different way. And if you keep that, those things in your mind to be, to think of new ways of doing things, then you can be successful, even in today's environment. Um, you know, I'll say it one more time, it doesn't happen by magic. It takes hard work and a good plan, good strategy, um, but don't think just because we're in the new normal, which is a term that I hate because <laughs> every single day that we wake up is, is new. Yeah. Um, but you can be successful even with r- restrictions that we face now, even for me, who's been doing this for more years than I really want to count at this point. I have a hundred percent changed the way that I've done my business this year. Right. Now I'm on Zoom calls two or three times every day with people all across the country that it's a lot better than a phone call or a text message or an email. Mm-hmm. The technology that we have, we should work with it and learn and do things in a different way. It yeah. doesn't matter what kind of profession or job that you're in. Right. Think any ways to do things. Yeah, I would 100% agree with that. It's It's a pivot, again, in how you run things. And I really think those who can... Uh, accommodate appropriately to this and really and really pivot and move forward in the right direction. I think we're going to have, uh, I, I think you're going to see even more increases, even, even as things kind of renormalize again, right. A, a, as businesses begin to open again, I think those who really can leverage that for the good are, are going to do very well. And I mean, heck I've talked to a lot of the chiropractors. I'm sure some that, that you work with as well are seeing higher numbers than ever before. I think in large part that comes back to the fact that I think a lot of people are realizing that uh, how important our health is and investing in our health uh, for us and, and, our, and our families as well. And so I've, I've seen some clinics where they're, I know Dr. Uh, the Stewarts there uh, in Hendersonville, right? It's at Nashville. They just see, they've just seen like their, their highest influx of patients ever in practice in the midst of all this COVID stuff. And so I think you, you look at that and again, it's just a mindset thing where you see all this negativity and all of this uh, uh, just downward spiral talk that isn't really doing any good. And I think it takes kind of finding the positive people who are making a difference and are, are very successful, again, not just on the financial end, but on the impact side as well. And so I think that's what, if anything, I hope this call provided uh, a lot of people here, Greg, is just, again, to show that things are possible. Things are absolutely possible. Well, well they are. And there are a lot of offices that are, are really growing a lot this year. And I think you've hit on that people do pay attention to their health. And I challenge everybody here watching or listening to this. Because, you know, we've talked a lot about numbers and, and making money and all that kind of stuff, but never lose sight of the fact of why you're doing what you're doing. 100%. And the why is you're helping people. 
As yeah. long as you keep that in your mind, then you're going to be successful financially and in life and in general. Is don't lose sight of that fact. 100%. I, I, I always say like, how you do one thing is how you do everything. I didn't come up with that, but how you do one thing is how you do everything, you know? And I think I talk about this from the schooling aspect with a lot of the mentality and the organization and the work ethic and discipline that it takes with your school and your studies. And I can attest to this myself and applying that it's work dividends. And again, like in the, in the mentorship group that we're part of with, uh, learning a lot of the, the practice, not practice management side of things, but all the leadership team building, a lot of the, the financial aspects has kind of dripped into that as well. And looking at, at what you're saying here, it's like, um, I just think it's again, that, that mindset shift, right? Absolutely. And I think it's, you know, you said it's not all about finances. I, I completely agree with that. And I think once you kind of get your, your finances should be something that should be in order, just like other aspects of your life is first. And so I, I believe that, yeah, if you put, again, it's all about wanting to better, you know, doing it for the right reasons. And again, I think because of that mindset that you have, you deserve to be successful and you deserve to uh, have, have an abundance of opportunities. And I think just understanding, it's more of an understanding the finances uh, and managing them well is, is the key to success. Well, I mean, it's just like your spine. You want your financials to be in alignment too. If you're not paying attention to me, they can get out of whack. Right. That's good. That's really good. Getting your life aligned. Absolutely. Well, awesome, Greg. Well, this has been uh, a great conversation. I think I, I learned a lot of things from this call and I I'm, I'm hope that a lot of others did as well. Um, if people have additional questions, as I'm sure some do, is there, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Well, probably the best way is via email. Uh, my email is G Hammonds, H A M M O N D S, at W H T C P A dot com. Um, but I do answer text messages, Facebook messages, phone calls, emails. Be careful, you might get, <laughs> yeah, might get bored up. Pigeons, smoke signals, you don't want whatever. That AM call from one of my sisters. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, yeah, I'll put all the information in the descriptions. So that way you can get a hold of him. You can always ask me questions as well. And um, this has been, I think, a great foundation. I know there's so much more we could probably dive into, but I, I hope that this served as a foundation for understanding student loans, that it's not something you have to be scared of. It's something to know, to understand, but again, have that plan of action. And I think that comes from, again, a lot of the success you're building while you're in school and for the future, uh, for the future practice and for other aspects of your life as well. So Definitely. thank you so much, Greg. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for having me.